66 million years ago, the Earth was in its twilight hour of the age of dinosaurs. Across the land, titans still walked. Herds of horned ceratopsians, long-necked sauropods, and massive predators stalking in the underbrush. In the oceans, mosasaurs the length of buses ruled with brutal efficiency, tearing through prey with crocodile jaws built for the sea. But above all of this, in the skies themselves, there were shadows that could blot out the sun. Most people know one of them, Quetzalcoatlus, the legendary giant pterosaur of North America, its wings stretching wide like an airplane, its long beak stabbing at prey below. For decades, it has been remembered as the largest animal to ever fly. Its very name, taken from the Aztec feathered serpent god, carries the weight of myth. But here is the twist. That title, as impressive as it sounds, doesn't actually belong to Quetzalcoatlus. In fact, paleontology has uncovered evidence of another sky monster, one that not only lived at the same time, but may have been even larger, heavier, and more fearsome than Quetzalcoatlus itself. This was Hatsagoptaryx, a creature so bizarre, so out of proportion, that scientists first mistook its bones for those of a carnivorous dinosaur. It ruled not the open plains of North America, but a strange island in what is now Romania, a place where the rules of evolution twisted giants into dwarfs and allowed this flying predator to become the true king of the skies. To understand this monster, we need to set the stage. The late Cretaceous was a world in transition. Much of Europe was not a single continent, but a vast archipelago a chain of islands scattered across a shallow tropical sea. Hatsig Island, where this predator lived, was roughly the size of modern-day Ireland, cut off from mainland predators and isolated by hundreds of miles of ocean. On these islands, life followed strange rules. Dinosaurs, usually known for their immense size, shrank into miniature versions. Titanosaurs barely bigger than cows, Hadrosaurs no taller than a horse. Even predators were reduced, small enough to stalk through dense forests. But while dinosaurs shrank, Hedsogoptaryx grew into a nightmare. Not just a flying reptile, but a top predator built to dominate a land without giant theropods to oppose it. The story of Hatsagopteryx begins in the 1970s. In Romania, a student-led excavation uncovered fragments of fossil bone. At first glance, these bones seemed to belong to something terrestrial, thick, heavy, and robust, like the limb of a carnivorous dinosaur. When paleontologists examined them, they realized something astonishing. These weren't dinosaur bones at all, but the remains of a pterosaur. And not just any pterosaur, one with proportions unlike anything else known. Its skull alone measured over 2.5 meters long, nearly the length of a small car. Its wing bones were massive, hollow yet sturdy, designed for both flight and the crushing power of life on land. For decades though, Hexagopteryx was almost forgotten. Only in 2002 was it formally named, its title translating to the winged monster of Hatsek. And fittingly so, because everything about it was monstrous. So how big was this sky beast? Estimates place its wingspan between 11 and 12 meters. That's up to 39 feet wide, comparable to the wingspan of a small airplane. On the ground, it stood over five meters tall, the height of a giraffe, but with jaws designed to kill. But wingspan wasn't the only factor. Cusalcoatlus may have matched Hatsagopteryx in wingspan, but Hatsagopteryx was built differently. Its bones were thicker, its neck shorter but massively reinforced, its muscles powerful enough to support a head that looked like a siege weapon. This wasn't a delicate glider of the open skies. This was a tank with wings. Imagine walking in a dense Cretaceous forest on Hatseg Island. Above you, the trees rustle. You look up, and towering above the brush is a creature the size of a giraffe, its head longer than your entire body its wings folded like the sails of a warship. This wasn't just the largest animal to ever fly. It was one of the largest predators Europe had ever seen. 
Hedsegopteryx wasn't a passive giant. Unlike many other pterosaurs that likely relied on fish or carrion, this predator seems to have ruled the island like a terrestrial hunter. Its skull wasn't just enormous, it was built for power. Unlike the long, slender, lightweight beaks of many flying reptiles, its head was stocky, reinforced with ridges for massive muscle attachments. Its neck, too, was bizarre. Where most pterosaurs had long, fragile necks suited for delicate snatching, Hatsegopteryx had a short, thick, brutally strong column of bone, compact and capable of withstanding incredible stress. Some studies suggest its neck could handle forces 10 times its body weight, allowing it to swing its skull like a wrecking ball. What did it do with this weaponized anatomy? It likely went after prey larger than most pterosaurs would ever attempt. On Hadjeg Island, dwarf sauropods and hadrosaurs walked in herds, reduced in size by the limited resources of an island ecosystem. To these smaller dinosaurs, Hatsegopteryx must have been a nightmare. Picture a herd of cow-sized titanosaurs drinking from a stream. The forest falls silent. Then, with a thunderous leap, a shadow unfolds. Wings snap open, beating the air as a skull nearly three meters long plunges down. A single strike, stabbing or bludgeoning, could crush bone and kill outright. This was not just the largest animal to fly. It was the apex predator of its world. Why did such a giant evolve on an island known for shrinking animals? This is the strange paradox of Hatsegopteryx. On Hatseg Island, large predators were absent. No Tyrannosaurus, no massive Allosaurus, none of the continent-sized threats that dominated elsewhere. Instead, the island was a land of dwarfs. Dinosaurs that normally grew to house-sized proportions on the mainland were miniaturized by limited resources. Titanosaurs that once stretched 30 meters long dwindled to barely six. Duck-billed hadrosaurs shrank to the size of ponies. But into this world stepped Hatsegopteryx. While everything else shrank, it took the opposite path, becoming massive, filling the empty role of top predator. Here, it didn't just survive as a pterosaur. It became the lion, the wolf, and the eagle all in one, a terrifying fusion of flyer and ground hunter. Its skull alone was a weapon unlike anything else. Two and a half meters long, deeper and sturdier than other pterosaurs, lined with sharp edges for stabbing prey. This, paired with its powerful neck, meant it could hunt not just small mammals and reptiles, but dinosaurs themselves. Some paleontologists suggest Hensegopteryx didn't swallow prey whole like many of its relatives, but instead killed larger victims by stabbing, shaking, or even bludgeoning them to death. It wasn't a delicate flyer dipping fish from rivers. It was a land-stalking, ground-hunting executioner. And yet, here's the mystery. Could something so massive truly take to the skies? For decades, scientists debated whether animals as large as Quetzalcoatlus or Hatsegopteryx could fly at all. The wings were certainly developed, built with hollow, lightweight bones like other pterosaurs. The structure resembled styrofoam, strong but full of air pockets to keep it light. This allowed it to unfold wings that stretched wider than a city bus. But its sheer weight raised questions. Was it built for soaring like an albatross, riding thermals over oceans for days? Or was it limited to shorter bursts of flight, hopping across Hatseg Island from hunting ground to hunting ground? The answer may be somewhere in between. While long-distance flight across continents might have been unlikely, Ansegopteryx almost certainly could launch itself with powerful quadrupedal leaps vaulting into the air with all four limbs before gliding down upon prey. It may not have flown across the globe, but it didn't need to. On its island domain, short, controlled flights were all it required to maintain its reign. The world of Hatseg Island was lush, warm, and strange. Dense forests covered the land, broken by rivers, streams, and swampy lowlands. Tropical plants thrived in a climate far warmer than modern Europe. 
In this paradise lived an odd mix of creatures. Dwarf dinosaurs, small reptiles, primitive mammals, and other pterosaurs that seemed tiny compared to their giant cousin. But all of them lived under the shadow of Hatsagopteryx. For perhaps a million years, it dominated this ecosystem. A flying predator with no rival, the true giant of the skies.